Good morning. We greet us again this morning in a brand new day, a day that we worship our Lord, and we also send our greetings for those who are watching from home virtually. Peace be with us all this morning as we greet each other and as we get ready for our service this morning. For those of us who are able, let us stand for our call to worship. For a day in your courts is better than a thousand elsewhere. For the Lord God is a sun and a shield, and bestows favor and honor. O Lord of hosts, blessed are those who trust in you. Let us pray. Father in heaven, thank you for this beautiful day. Thank you that we are able to come to your house and worship you. We pray as we stand and open our hearts and believe with our spirit that you are with us. Bless this service today. Bless us as we stand to worship you. We pray also for those who are coming and for those who are thinking of coming. Lord, be with them and travel with them as they come home to church. We pray, Lord, that you will lead us in worship. We pray that you will lead us in all that we do today, our readings, your word, our hymns, and be with us all. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And now, let us greet one another with the peace of Christ. May the peace of Christ be with you. So, with you. And now, please join in our opening song of praise. Rise up, O men of God.
Our gospel reading today comes from John chapter 6, verses 56 to 69. It is responsive. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so the one who feeds on me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Your ancestors ate manna and died, but whoever feeds on this bread will live forever. He said this while teaching in the synagogue in Capernaum. On hearing it, many of his disciples said, This is a hard teaching. Who can accept it? Aware that his disciples were grumbling about this, Jesus said to them, Does this offend you? Then what if you see the Son of Man ascend to where he was before? The Spirit gives life. The flesh counts for nothing. The words I have spoken to you, they are full of the Spirit and life. Yet there are some of you who do not believe. For Jesus had known from the beginning which of them will not believe and who would betray him. He went on to say, This is why I told you no one can come to me unless the Father has enabled them. From this time, many of his disciples turned back and no longer followed him. You do not want to leave too, do you, Jesus asked the twelve. Simon, Simon Peter, Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and to know that you are the Holy One of God. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. And let us be seated. Let us pray. Father in heaven, again we come to you with our prayers, our prayers of concerns, our prayers of joys, our prayers that most of us could not share, the prayers that most of us pray in our heart, the prayer that most of us sing for you alone to hear. But today, as we come to your presence, we pray for our church as a whole. We pray for our faith community. We pray for the country as a whole, and also we pray for the world. We ask you, Lord, as so many things are happening around us, sounds of Christ, sounds of fear, sounds that you alone could heal, sounds alone that we carry to you, our burdens that we carry to you alone, and today, as we come to you in prayer, we ask you, Lord, to please hear our prayers. Today, we also come with our prayers of concerns for our church members, for those who ask for healing, and we pray for continuing healing in their lives. We also pray for those who are looking for job, for those who are <coughs> caregivers in their own homes or in their own house. We pray, Lord, that you will be with them. We also pray for those who are traveling. We pray, Lord, that you guide them and keep them safe. We also pray for those who will be traveling, especially Joan. Tomorrow she will be traveling to Turkey. We ask, Lord, that you be with her. Be her companion and guide her. We also pray, Lord, for those who are sick, for our church members who are homebound. We pray, Lord, that you be with them. We pray for their caregivers. We pray for the doctors and the nurses who take her who take care of them. We ask, Lord, for your healing hand to be with them. We pray, Lord, today for our pastor and his family who is out of town. We pray that you be with them, and we also ask for your guidance on their lives. Today, Lord, we are thankful that we are in your house. We are thankful that we are able to be here and praise and worship you. We thank you that we know we can sing and enjoy the hymns that we sing in praising your name, Father. We also pray for those of our church members who are working and thankful they still have a job to go to. We pray for those who are looking for job and we ask, Lord, that you guide them to find the right job that they need. Father in heaven, thank you for all that you have done to us. We thank you for all the healings that we thank you that you have met our need. We also pray for the joys and be thankful for those who have joys in healing, in finding job, in knowing where they 
that they receive what they are looking for. We also pray, Father, that you be with us today in our church service. Your words that we will be hearing, the, the song that we will be singing, our community of faith, for those of us who are in your house and those of us who are traveling to come. We pray, Lord, that you be with us all. And we also thank you for the prayer that you taught us to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and amen. Amen. And our message today sounds harsh, isn't it? Eat my body, drink my blood. And the question that was in there, do you also want to live? That is, it's quite a harsh reading. It is quite, quite a reading that we have to rethink. Even the disciples, they tell themselves, this is quite a harsh reading. Lord, some of them started, for those people who were there, some of them started to walk away. It is not a, an easy thing to understand. It is not an easy word to know. Even Jesus told his disciples, do I offend you? Most of the time, that's a question we ourselves could not ask. Our workmates, our family, or oh, it's kind of a joke. Do I offend you by what I'm saying? Hmm. And even Jesus told his disciples, do I offend you? In today's reading, it has a lot of questions. It has a lot of interaction with Jesus and the people and his disciples. But this is the end of reading from, our, from uh, uh, the reading of uh, today. It is a long reading. From the beginning of the reading of the, of the book, it started with Jesus feeding the thousands of people with five loaves of barley bread and two feces. People started to follow Jesus. And then Jesus walked on water. Jesus has to go up to the mountain to stay and pray, kind of hiding from the crowd, because he gave them bread. You and I like bread. I like bread. Bread is one of my favorite things. <laughs> I'm not ashamed to say that in my house. Douglas used to tell me, do you have a bread in the house? I say, why not? <laughs> I love bread. Even though he doesn't eat bread, I alone eat bread. And bread is what made people follow Jesus because he gave them bread. People like to eat. They were not thinking of spiritual bread. They were thinking of bread, of bread, manual bread that people have to eat. And in our reading today, the Bible, the, the, even when Jesus told them, I am the bread of life, the bread that comes down from heaven, people still don't understand. For myself, most of the time, I still forget that. I don't understand. I, re I know that he is the bread of life, but I just forget it. In my hunger, I forget Jesus. When I'm angry, I forget Jesus. And that is the way of human life. And that is the life, my life, that I pray that God, please, Jesus, take this away from me. Please help me to remember that I'm here on a purpose. I am the reason, there's a reason for myself being here. And use my, my, your purpose on my life. Because most of the time, I tend to fall back into the flesh and not into the spirit. And I hope that I'm not alone. I hope that most of us are in my boat, that we are all rowing the same boat. Most of the time, we struggle with ourselves. Most of the time, we tend to ask our faith, our faith. We believe, we know that we believe in Christ. We know that we are following Jesus Christ in our thinking, in our spiritual knowing, in our flesh doing, we do the opposite. We tend to do the opposite a lot. At work, because I 
take care of most of the senior citizen, most of the time I have to stand back and look at myself and tell myself, what am I doing? Am I saying the right word? Am I doing the right thing? This is a dad. This is a mom. This is a head of a family. I am here as a caregiver. I am here as a nurse to nurse him or her through life, through whatever journey he goes through. This is the last place where he or she will be. And I want to make sure that when this life ends, he is in the right place. She is in the right place. The past few months has been a hard place at work. We have hired a lot of people. We have hired couples, we have hired single persons, we have hired all kinds of people who are looking for job. A month later, I told them, you are not fit for the job. This is the work of compassion. This is the work you need, you have to love. This is the work you have to follow. This is the rules that we do. And they say, oh no, I can do this, this is my right. Yes, your right is out the door, not in the building. Sometimes that sounds harsh. To me, I know it's harsh. I have to lay off people. I have to tell them this is what it is. It is a work of compassion. As Jesus told his disciple, do I offend you? What am I doing if what I'm saying, eat my blood, drink, eat my flesh, eat my blood, sounds so harsh that you want to walk away? Do I offend you? And that is the question that goes back to the First Communion. That is the, the, the question that takes us back to walking with Jesus, to knowing this is what Jesus wants us to do. Jesus told his disciples, your ancestors ate manna in the forest and they died. We have to go back and read that book of De Deuteronomy. People complain. We don't want this bread. We don't want these flakes. We have been eating this from Exodus. They, God has provided for them manna. In De Deuteronomy, they started to complain. They started to complain about what they were eating. They were eating, they were not paying anything. They wake up in the morning, they go collect food. It's breakfast, it's free, cereal is free. In the evening, the birds came, they went and collect, it's free. Who would do that? But we are just like that. We still complain. We have the same air that we breathe. We still complain. We look at our neighbor and we still complain. The fence goes up and we still complain. This week at our condo, people, the construction people came in and started painting our steps and everything at the outside, the common area. The next morning I step outside, here was a woman telling me, do you know what they're doing in my car, they're painting the condo? I said, well, that was, they sent the message like a month ago. Nobody tell me. <laughs> I said, well, go read your email. Maybe you can, <laughs> maybe. You, I have nothing to say to that. I know we received email two months ago that they were coming to do this, and we, st we are still this. We are still complaining. Even the people who Jesus took out from Egypt, they complain. They have free food manna, they still complain. And we are still doing the same. Jesus came down to, to the earth and we are still complaining. He says, I eat my bread, drink my, eat my body, drink my blood. I am the spirit. You live by the spirit, not by flesh. We tend to take the flesh, leave the spirit alone, away. And then we do our own thing. It is quite a journey for trying to follow Jesus. This is, the last year was a hard year, one year of COVID. This year we have vaccination. We step out, we do things that we would like to do, and yet we still have limited, limited area that we, can, that we can go or do. We are still limited in what we can do or, or, or move forward to. Yet, most of us are still complaining. We should we still be thankful, we should be thankful that we live in a world that we can witness all these changes, that we can witness the journey that Christ has taken us through, that we, can, that we will be the witness to tell the generation behind us, this is what Lord take us through. We were there, but we survived. We ate manna because Christ was with us. 
There was people who were providing for us. There was people who gave us some word of comfort. There was someone who gave me a sandwich. There was someone who gave me a bottle of water to drink. That was my journey with Christ. That was the Christ who was in that person. And this is the story that we will be telling our, our next generation. Maybe some people will make money out of it, write a book. If I can write a book, I will, but I don't know how. <laughs> I don't know how, maybe that way I can earn a lot of money. But God in his own way put us in his own places that we could be his own body. And that is our calling today. Our calling today as, we, as Jesus is asking us, do you also want to live? Do you want to leave this Christ behind? Do you want to go your own way? We have a choice to make. Stay with Christ and follow what Christ wants us to do and be the body of Christ. Today, to be a body of Christ, it is a huge thing. We are challenged. There's so many Christ from all sides of the earth because of COVID. Last year, we have the food pantry. We were able to feed our food pantry. And that is our answer. That is our answer to Christ calling us. We are able to do things that God calls us to be. This year in my country, in Fiji, COVID goes rampant. I thank God and I tell my God, thank you for preparing myself for the pantry. Because now I should, I would be able to help the people back home who is our neighbors. I was calling, I was talking with my sister one day and she said, this is the time when people really want help. In every corner, in every household, when we ask them for something, do you have this? The answer is always no. We, we have no sugar, we ran out of flour, there's no rice. The basic needs of everyday living the basic needs of everyday living. And I told my sister, this is what we can do. I will help you help them. So I did do that. I sent out some funds for them to go to the grocery stores and my sister say, well, I have to stand like two hours waiting, for the, for the, uh, waiting in line to shop. I say, if you have to spend the whole day, that is what Christ was doing. You stand on line and wait. It sounds tough, it sounds harsh. But it is what we have to do. It is what we have to do. There's no question around that. There's no way to go around that. I asked her, did you have your phone with you when you were online? She said, yes. I was holding my phone and I kept my phone in my, in my purse. I said, why do you put your phone in your purse? The phone is there for a reason. And she said, well, I don't know why, how to, you, to do, what else to do. I say, that's when you pray, use your phone and ask someone, how can you do this better? How can this go quicker than where, what you're doing, uh, standing there online? The next day, he did, she did the same thing. She said, I went up to the security and asked the, the security, how, how, how can we help these people walk faster into the store? Most of these people are senior, senior citizens. If we make two or three lines, people will walk in quick and out. The, the security say, oh, that's a good idea. I say, that's why you have mouth. God give us mouth. Connect these two together. <laughs> it can work. And this is the time. When we are in a crisis, when there are people who are looking at us as hmm, weird, this is the time that we use our common sense. This is the time we connect what God given us as a free gift, our mind and our mouth. Use it as a tool to work things out. And I told my sister, it maybe sounds harsh, I'm sorry, but you have to do something. You have to be harsher than that. You have to struggle to make people think and do things because most of the people, they are just there waiting and for someone to tell them move. And that is where it is. That is how we, we live. And most of in our reading today, the, the story of Jesus telling them, do you want to live? Simon Peter say, where would we go? You have life. Life is in you. And that applies to all of us. Where would we go without Christ? What will we do without Christ? It will be a very lonely life. It will be a very sad life. 
because as we can witness with Christ with, with us, Christ is in us, we do a lot of happy things together. We are able, we enjoy helping others. We enjoy giving out, doing mission works to help other people in other countries. Life is more meaningful. We tell ourselves, hmm, this is a good thing. Christ is really in me. Christ, the spirit of Christ really lives in me. I will take us back to a story way back in the Christmas of 1972, between 1972 and 1973. My dad is a sailor. It was the last trip of the vessel to go out to the uh, outer islands to, to take things for Christmas and bring people over to the main island for Christmas. The boat was overcrowded. There was a lot of families coming over to the big island for Christmas. Christmas gift, family things were all in the same boat. In the middle of the night, this was like on the 22nd of September, a cyclone hit, a hurricane hit the boat, Cyclone Loti. The boat was capsized, 68 people perished. My brother was also in the boat. He was the first one to reach an island with seven kids that he managed to swim them along with him. The rescue and the search and rescue has been called off four days. My dad was still missing. Our mother called us and said, we will have to pray and believe he is still out there because he's a strong guy. And he was swimming with one of his friends from the, from the vessel. His friend told him, brother, I know that I won't make it, I won't make it but you can make it say hi to my family. Second day, he passed away. Dad says, my eyes was blow with salt. I could not speak because the salt, I drank a lot of seawater, and I couldn't speak. On the third day, the fourth evening came by, he heard a vessel, an engine vessel. It is a big boat, he know. He started to splash water. And while he was swimming, he was reciting Psalm 23. The spirit was with him. He know he can make him. He know he can make it. He know there's an angel coming. He know rescue is coming. He could not hear airplanes, but he heard an engine coming by. The MV Suchao, a Chinese vessel, container boat, was sailing across the ocean. Dad started splashing. They saw him. He was the last person rescued. He made it to the front page and all he says was, with a sack of coconut and Christ as my savior, I made it. The spirit was in with us. The spirit that lived in with us. When he survived the, the hurricane, we thought he was not going back to the ocean. He says, it is my calling. I love the ocean, I love the outdoors. He went back and started his own his job. He came back one day, we sat down. Two weeks later, I sat beside him and he said, you know what, my daughter, I say what? Education is the key to your success. When you have good education, you travel the world. There's a big world. God created a big world out there. Go and visit the, the, the other side of the world. It's beautiful. I have been there. It is so wonderful. And that is what Christ wants us to do. It is a beautiful thing to go out. Where will we go? Simon Peter say, where, are we, where would we go? Christ, we are with you because life is with you. And that is our all calling. That is the question that we should be all asking. Where will we go? From today on, we will ask ourselves, what am I going to do? Jesus told them, do you also want to live? We will have the answer from Simon. Where will we go? Life is with you. Life is with you. Life as we, is with us as we leave this place and we go out. We take the good news. We know the Spirit lives in with us. We know that the Spirit will tell us to make the right thing. It could be hard. It would be a struggle. It will make you think. It will make you make other people work. Think about what they're doing. It will make you know, this is my calling. If I have to push someone to do the right thing, I will have to push it. It might be harsh. Even people might not be happy. People might walk away. And that is the challenge of having the body of Christ and drinking the blood of Christ. 
as we have already done, as we have done so many times. And still we have to ask ourselves, is this the right thing for me to do? Do, do I have to do what Jesus asked me to do? Do I want to live? If I live, where would I go? What will my life picture will be like? Who am, what will be the story, the end story of my life after I leave this earth? What will people rem 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 remember me of? What will they say? They will say, what's he a good person? Or will be like Jesus told the people. He will separate the goat from the sheep. Go this way and go that way. And we have the choice while we're still breathing and walking. Might sound harsh. We have a choice to do on our life. We have a choice while we are still able to make that choice. As we go out today, my prayers and my hope that we have a choice to make, that we will say what Simon says, Jesus, where would we go? Life is with you. We believe in you. We believe that you are able and you will be able to guide us. Walking with Jesus is not an easy walk. It's a walk that we have to struggle every day. It is the walk that we have to choose what is right, what is wrong. Most of the time we don't know the difference. Most of the time we witness and we ask ourselves, is this the right thing for me to do? We will end our sermon today by asking ourselves, is this the right thing to do? Let us pray. Father in heaven, thank you for your word. Thank you for the challenges that you have put in front of us. Thank you for we know that you won't leave us alone. We might be harsh, it might be strong, it might be a different path that you're guiding us, but we ask you, Lord, to be with us. Bless us as we go out today. Bless your word in Jesus' name. Amen. Our song of dedication today is Blessed Assurance from the Red Hymnal, number 369, led by Johnson and our praise team. Please stand if you're able.
seated. Well, it says, look in the announcement section, but I want to tell you about a couple of things that aren't in there. First one is, I have an August newsletter. It was mailed out to everybody on the email list this morning. If you want a paper copy, there are a few available. And Janelle is going to see that people that aren't here and need them will get some of those as well. Also, the food pantry box needs some filling to help fill the food pantry outside. So when you come on, Janelle. I, 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 need, to, I need to stop you right there. And that is because uh, Melania and Lo brought box after box of food. <laughs> <laughs> and we don't have room anymore for it. So okay. Can you hold off for a month or two? <laughs> what a wonderful thing to have. Too much. <laughs> Too much. Oh, thank you, Jill. And then also, um, changes are happening. And Janelle is working on creating another classroom for us for another group of students, and she needs some help. So, if you can help her, she's got needs some painters. She may need some help moving some larger pieces of furniture. I'm not sure what all she needs, but if you think you could help her, please talk to Janelle. Send her an email, and uh, she'd really appreciate some assistance in trying to get this classroom ready so that we can have another group of students, which is wonderful to be saying because we're expanding so we have another age group that can get some Sunday school. And... We should also thank Donna for stepping up to do that. <laughs> yes, Donna is ready. going to be our, is is our that's teacher. To do it. That's, that's a big deal. Yes, that is great. And I know Nellie Ann's trying to get us a nursery attendant so we can keep that portion going as well. So, Kristen? Do you have something for us this morning? Yeah, it hasn't gotten into the bulletin and I, I will look to that. But Coins of Compassion are still part of our ministry. Also, although UMCOR hasn't got an advance number for Haiti and the people who are experiencing the wildfires, they are doing some work already. I uh, submitted something for the newsletter, um, but the fact is, is that our church local, our community, our family local, and across the sea are in, our, are in need. And then, um, can we have a couple of volunteers uh, for our, to collect our offering today? Andy? Albert? Thank you very much, gentlemen. Jesus Christ is power. 
Lord will lift up your gifts, your blessings to us. And now we bless it back to you so it could be used in your work. And you pray and we pray for the blessings for those who give and for those who don't give. We pray, Lord, that you bless us and bless this church. Amen. 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 To, say, to take the light out and to share your light with the world. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Can we have two people come through uh, forward as acolytes? Thank you. Please have a good week. <laughs> <laughs>